What's up, people? This is Sam, a.k.a. Dog Pound Brown in the Nerd Psychopedia Studios. Um, wanted to let you know that we are back on track. I do want to apologize that um, we've been off um, sync for a minute, a little bit on of a hiatus. Um, but we are on track to continue with the Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. So just wanted to leave you a quick, um, message, you know, just letting you know, everything is fine. You know, we're back on track and let you know that we're going to be leading up to this TV show that's coming out in October. Oh, we are super excited and hope you are all, you know, along with us on this journey. Um, go back and, um, check out all the previous episodes. We are leading up until the, um, October debut. So um, check out the history of the Watchmen. Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. Follow us on Nurse at Nurse Hycopedia all over social media. Email us. Um, go to the website at NurseHycopedia.com with all our information. So see you when we see you. Peace. If you're joining us today for the first time, this is part eight of a multi-part series designed to help introduce and discuss the source material for the HBO show Watchmen. If you're unfamiliar with the story or like to start from the beginning of a story, you may want to see our episode on Issue 1. Alright, welcome to Sam and Scott, our watching Watchmen, the show where we watch the HBO show Watchmen. I'm Scott. I'm Sam. And welcome, welcome today. Today we'll be discussing uh, Chapter 8 of the original comic, Old Ghosts, and uh, how are you doing today, Sam? Ah, cool, cool. I'm, you know, just watching Watchmen and, you know, just just keep watching the Watchmen, you know, just watch watch, watch themselves, you know. There's a lot of watching <laughs> going on here, guys. If they don't watch the, <laughs> if they can't watch themselves, then who watches them? <laughs> we who do. <laughs> We're going to do it. Yeah, buddy. First yep. Sam's going to do it, then later on, <laughs> me. Right. <laughs> That's the order in which we decided to <laughs> watch it. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. Sam, where can they find us? All right, so we got a um, uh, Facebook group um, called Sam and Scott are Watching Watchmen. So join mm -hmm. that Facebook group, and, you know, we'll be we, – we, we chat. We talk about everything Watchmen, um, you know, and it's just an interactive, great community. You can also email us at watchingwatchmen at nerdcyclopedia.com. You can follow us on Twitter at watching um, – I'm sorry, yeah, Watchmen Podcast – uh, with a one, not a T at the end. That's right. They, <laughs> um, asked, they asked us for like a little extra money for the T, and I was just like, no way, Jose. Not at all. Our people can get that the one not is really all. a T. Not at all. Um, also, you can um, follow us just on um, Instagram. We got a new Instagram um, um, page up um, at Nerdcyclopedia, and the same thing with Twitter as well. Uh, what else, man? We just got so. Oh, you can um listen to us at all the your favorite podcast places: iTunes, Google Play, you know, Stitcher, uh, <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. Spotify, yeah. everywhere, you know, everywhere. Just, and Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. Yeah, podcast. and make sure to check out our other feed, the Nerd Cyclopedia podcast, where we discuss nerd topics A to Z. Oh yeah, don't we just forget finished that. up season one over there. Don't forget that and. Um, you can find all our information right on our website, of course, at NerdCyclopedia.com. The redesigned and revamped oh, NerdCyclopedia.com. Awesome thing. Oh, don't forget, Scott, we are going to be at the um, Steel City Con um, from yes. April 12th to um, April 14th. We will be oh. doing, like, you know, we'll have a table there. You can come visit us and, you know, see what it's like uh, to, to watch us do a, a marathon podcast live. Yeah, yeah. And then you can see what it's like to watch us watching Watchmen. There you go. It's in That's Monroeville, That's a story guys. within a story. <laughs> Monroeville um, Convention Center. Over by the Monroeville Mall, you know, right off of 376. So no excuses to anybody, especially those of you that live on the east side of Pittsburgh. We know who you are. Yeah. Trust us. We get that info. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. uh, so that's uh, that's us. That's where you can find us, and we're super excited to have you here today. Yes. Remember to mash subscribe. Remember to leave us a review. Those are very, very helpful. Very helpful. Uh, as, as always, uh, I expect five stars, and if not, I reserve the right to uh, have the business and provide that business to you. Have, provide, and give. <laughs> Given the business. It's my business to give away. I'll do what I want with it. Yes, sir. All right. So... <laughs> So, um, we are talking about Chapter 8 today. Uh, chapter 8 is entitled Old Ghosts. And, 
Yeah, I know. Spooky, spooky. And it takes place on Halloween 1985, which, <laughs> uh, ironically enough, is also the setting for the Garfield Halloween special. All right, there we go. So Garfield maybe takes place in this universe. I don't know, though. There's not so much. Uh, <laughs> Possibly. Not so much. Yeah, not so much nuclear war imagery in the Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so uh, we start out uh, over at uh, the old folks' home, where Hollis and uh, Laura, uh, I'm sorry, Hollis and Sally are having a conversation mm-hmm. because Hollis uh, recognized <laughs> a certain outfit in oh, uh, in a certain ship mm-hmm. uh, in the uh, you know in the uh, rescuing of uh, of some victims in a fire that we may remember from last week. Yep. Yeah, so so they're talking about that, and it's sort of a warning for uh, for Sally to tell Lori, "Hey, I think they're on to you." And one thing I want to point out about this, uh, it's like a montage where you don't really see, you know, you don't really see either of them, right? You see their like their feet and their hands and kind of their surroundings, right, right. And Hollis, you know, Hollis Mason as a as, as during his active time as Night Owl never really monetized Night Owl, right? You know, he never really made a lot of money off of Night Owl. And, you know, he'd always he sort of retired on his policeman's pension and ran a business. And you can see the accoutrement, the uh, surroundings, if you will, of his home mm-hmm. are all very basic. Right. He's got some newspapers, some ashtrays, looks like a can of, like, malt liquor. Right. You know, he's hanging out. And then we go over to Sally's house, and Sally's getting, like, getting a pedicure. <laughs> you know, she's got flowers everywhere. Stark difference between the two. Yeah. But, rem- but remember, Sally was the one that figured out how to make money on being a masked adventurer. Mm-hmm. That's why she had an agent. That's how the whole Minutemen thing got started. So that's another. It's a commentary on the uh, on the commercialism, if you will, of the, uh, yeah, it's a, the it's, superhero genre. It's a couple things going on here. So we got like the um, you know, how the the cover of the chapter, you know, goes into like the first panel and everything. So mm-hmm, you got mm-hmm. the first the cover of the chapter, you know, with Hollis Mason's um, Night Owl, you know, trophy. Right. <laughs> you know, he yes. was he was granted like you know a trophy. It, it, the funny thing about that is is that he has a moon on his belt, which is just mm-hmm. so typical, you know, trope superhero like you know <laughs> symbolizing everything. <laughs> Exactly. Um, he has a picture of the, like the Minutemen and um, uh, the Crime Busters, right in the background, mm-hmm. or is it the Minutemen? Um, uh, Minutemen. The Minutemen. Crime Busters in the, the sixties. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're right. The uh, uh, Minutemen. So, like Scott said, um, we really don't see uh, the the faces of you know Hollis and um, you know Sally talking, but we get different um, pictures of. The, the differences between old superheroes or I'm sorry, our old master adventures, you know, talking about reminiscing about like, you know, back in the day um, when they see Lori and Dan's um, or Dan's ship right on the th- mm-hmm. on, on the um, on the TV and everything. So they're just right. going they're, they're They're talking to each other, um, reminiscing and everything. And uh, that's this is a really great way for um for um dave gibbons to actually you know present these panels without you having to uh you know see the faces of you know these characters um it's Mm -hmm. just just going on different different um different different pictures of like the backgrounds and everything you got the first panel with the trophy you got like scott said the um the we we have adrian vettit's beats (laughs) um um uh, perfume or whatever, you know, that I guess that right. Sally bought, you know, we see the, I'm in the third panel. We see, just see the hand of, um, Hollis's, you know, Hollis talking on the phone and everything and so on and so forth throughout like this first page. And we just get, you know, different talk bubbles of them conversating and reminiscing and stuff without them actually seeing you without you actually seeing the faces. Just what I just wanted to point out was that in, um, a lot of superhero books, this type of thing doesn't really happen. So it's a really different way of storytelling in a comic book without it actually having to be in your face. Mm-hmm. And it's, a, and the other thing to think about is, so if, if you look at, at these first couple of panels, you see, you know, Night Owl statue, which, you know, we know, I mean, we know says ingratitude on it, right? So it's what's presented yeah. to him when he retired. It's a statue of himself, right? Right. Like a mini pedestal, like, you know, like how remember at the end of Dark Knight Rises, how they put that Batman statue in City Hall, uh, yeah. right? That's got it's like a mini version of that. Mm-hmm. And then you flash over to uh, to Silk Spectre, and she's got the thing that has a big N that says nostalgia on it, and they mm-hmm. both have those sort of like attention flashes on them, right? You know, so you can see this is sort of what their what their minds on, right? Mm-hmm. So for Hollis, he's he's kind of talking his conversations all about doing some superhero business, right? Right. 
he's warning her about what's going on with uh you know with dan and mm-hmm. oh hey i think there's you know your daughter's in danger man mm-hmm. they're uh, <laughs> they're getting back into this dangerous business mm-hmm. and then what sally want to do well sally wants to talk about the old days right and that's why she's nostalgia's right there right so it's symbolic ah, of her right, backwards right, looking right. great 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 and then point. And you see uh, her talking about the way they she says, "Do you ever get in the costume again?" And he says, "Ah, it's different for us. <laughs> like it's not the same for men, right? Is that is that right here? Mm-hmm. I think it's right here." So she she wants to talk about you know the old days and their friends. And Hollis is a, is business focused, right? He's focused on the work of superhero heroism mm-hmm. for some reason. So that, that's a, that's an interesting contrast between the two of them, and yeah, and a, adds to that difference that we saw. You know, that you can kind of get from the fact that Sally has you know profited <laughs> right yeah. she went all those like all that it that seems like she had a licensing deal you know right 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 oh also to, you know to her thing too she just was talking to Lori about like um you know her, her and um Lori was having that discussion about you know them you know costume adventuring and everything and how Lori disapproved of that now all mm-hmm. of a sudden she's seeing her daughter <laughs> you right. know she's seeing her daughter and Dan going out and she's just like wow you know I may have had some, you know, influence on this and everything. She's she's sort of like a proud mama in this moment and everything, you know. Just mm-hmm. and, and then just the whole thing just takes them takes her back, you know, it takes them both back. But you know, she's she's reminiscing on like the um, I guess the good old days. Yep, yep, yep. So she's she, you know, Sally likes to live in the past yeah. because she she was she really before she had Lori was you know she I think she liked the attention. I think that's that's something that we're to understand from you know even from uh, that scene in chapter three where she's you know looking at the porno mag <laughs> weirdo <laughs> right. center you know that's about about her that's a, ugh, that's, a grind. <laughs> that's weird man yeah oh, I mean but I, I guess if you think about it you know you have fans and fans you know they 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 you get obsessive fans that do more than just actually um you know just just you know observe you and everything they actually got to go the extra step and do something to um to show that there are fans right. and everything you know and yeah. that's i guess where that's where you get into the um rebel a fanatic you yeah. know <laughs> you actually yeah. start making cartoons <laughs> and start making actual porno you know it, i, I it's, a, it's, a, it's a way to show love which is i guess what what um at um her stage in her life, Sally is just looking at it like that. I mean, it's yeah, it's, she misses the bright lights, is, you know. Bit. So she she loved the attention. I mean, why 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 do you think she she made the um, you know, she decided to profitize off you know her um image and everything. You know, mm-hmm. this is what you get. You know, exactly you get this type of thing. You know, and that was and that feels like a lot of her motivation with with you know training her daughter was mm-hmm. you know let's get not just the profit but also the attention. So being like her mother and her manager, right, and taking over that role that that dude that her husband had for her when she was active, right? You know, that was a way of her almost it's almost like um, what they call it Munchausen by proxy, yeah, where they where like the 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 parent will try to sicken the child for attention, yeah, yeah. It's almost yeah. a similar thing, you know. So she wants her her daughter to again undertake these actions in this lifestyle mm-hmm. so she can get attention, right. Right. Not, right. not not that I and again I don't want to I don't want to be too hard on Sally here. I don't want anyone to feel like we're beating her up or anything, but <laughs> you know, I mean it, it seems like that's the motivations we're to understand from the story. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I mean, we're mean, not really beating um, her up. I really no Gibbons and these guys are beating her up. <laughs> More and Gibbons are the ones doing the beating here. We're just uh, noticing it. Yeah, we're just uh, trying to no interpret deal. and, you know, trying to figure some things out. You know, if this is what it was meant to, to, to be, then you know it is what it is. It's people out here like that, you know, they, they yeah. live through their children. You right. know. Um, they 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 get to a point in life where they may not have accomplished um you know the certain levels that they want and then they hope they hope that they can have that continue through their child you know right. whether their child wants to do it or not is another thing but um in, in this aspect Lori is just I mean sorry Sally is she's really proud of her um you know her daughter getting in it <laughs> yep yep you know she really um, likes it it's like mm-hmm. ah that took you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so awesome. <laughs> so uh, from there, we flash to New York, and we flash to uh, you know the newsstand where we're hearing about the Black Freighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of real bleak stuff going on in the Black Freighter story. You know, uh, talking to his, his shipmates that are dead and bloated, and you know, just adrift, thinking, "Oh man, my my wife and my daughters are going to be murdered by the Black Freighter because they're going to get there before me." Mm-hmm. Um, we're also we're also treated to that silhouette imagery, the silhouetted graffiti. 
uh, which is uh, an image that we see repeated throughout the story. Right. And uh, funny, funny thing here. So then Gus shows the uh, <laughs> Gus shows the, uh, uh, the the headlines about uh, Rorschach to uh, the doctor. <laughs> he's like, "Oh yes, yeah, so oh Kovacs, incredible!" Blah, blah, blah. Right. And he walks away. And uh, he's like, uh, you know, Gus is trying to tell the dude he's intimately involved in Rorschach's treatment about Rorschach's treatment. Like, oh, I was involved in this. Like, isn't that neat? Ah, it's something for me. Right. Yeah, yeah. What, what was that? Did you hear something? Yeah, it went out there for a second. I'm going to have to cut this. Um, but okay, um, for enough. whatever reason, um, your audio, well, I can't hear you. Uh, just oh, I mean, okay. just keep recording, obviously. But okay. um, So I'm going to have to splice this a little bit. But, okay. um, but yeah, it, it. I couldn't hear you for like about like five seconds, and then it comes back in. So it might do that a couple more times. I don't know what's going okay. on. Okay. Anyway, but go ahead. Okay. So... Where was I? Uh, you what were. Was I about? We were talking about um, um, Gus. Oh, the doctor. Right. Got the Gus and the doctor. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the doctor, <laughs> Gus says, "Ah, it's preoccupied. Probably a teacher or something." And then mm-hmm. the uh, the doctor walks away, and then we we cut to. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's amazing how these character how they they use these characters um, yeah. that are in different parts of the story in the world and mm-hmm. the universe and everything. Um, we 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 as a um, you know the viewers you know already know this character, but the character I mean the the um, Gus doesn't know <laughs> that we know you know I, I, right I, how could he know? But it's just amazing how you know um, other characters relate to each other within the story. You know end up meeting each other. Um, and they have different, their, their character arcs are already shaped a little bit. You know, we know a little bit about, mm-hmm. you know, um, insights to, um, you know, Gus showing and, and, the, and, the, um, you know, the, the guy reading the, the comic book and everything, I almost feel you like know, their, 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 their story a little bit. And then we see the, um, the psychologist, you know, go past and everything and how they just, you know, just happen to be interact. So we already know their, their perspective backgrounds and they just happen mm-hmm. to meet in, in these instances mm-hmm. and everything. It Absolutely. Shows, it so shows how connected the universe is. It does. It's, to, it's a full universe. And I almost feel like this is something Gus does to him every single day. Like he shoves Rorschach's face in his, in his face. Cause we mm-hmm. saw that, I think an earlier chapter right? where, uh, you know, Wendell was, um, is that his name anyway? Or the doctor was, uh, you know, walking up and saying, he shows me Rorschach's picture. He says, oh, I knew him. Is it in a small world, right? It's like a funny thing. And then it happens again mm-hmm. here when we already know that, like, you know, the doctor is, like, uh, depressed. And, like, Rorschach is one, right. basically, right? Like, that's kind of that's kind of what happened uh, there. Gus is like a, um, he's a, he's a really great comment on how people take any media and mm-hmm. form their opinions based on, like, you know something that they read or whatever and just just you know just just have an opinion (laughs) you know they already have like a judgment already set you know why i knew this guy was such 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 you don't know (laughs) that guy you know you don't know what he's been through and everything but you read something in the paper or whatever and then all of a sudden you're an expert you know you you have all this judgment of the world and everything i feel that gus is like a comment on that you know um, <laughs> you know, he just has judgment to everybody, you know, he, he, um, yeah. So, I mean, that's, I, I thought it, he, he's a really great comment on a, that type of person, you know, in this universe. Know it all guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's all about me. I'm the main character of this story. <laughs> that's, that's what he's saying. Oh man. Okay. So next, uh, we go to, um, Next, we're treated to the fabulous uh, Al, Al Roos, which is what I'm just going to call it now, just so we have a setting. And Dan and Lori are planning a prison breakout for Rorschach. They're saying he's homicidal. Like, this is a, this is suicidal, right? It's, right? it's incredible. We can't do this. And then there's a really great three-panel system where we cut. And at the end of the third panel, I want to I want to think about, I want us to look at what, what Dan's wearing. Okay. Like, his entire outfit now is totally different, right? His demeanor is different. Oh, man. He's you know, he's, an, he's a man of action man now. Of I, wonder, action. Mm-hmm. I wonder why his confidence is respected. <laughs> it's amazing what happens when you get uh, some after right? a minute. Uh, yeah. Uh, Buddy. <laughs> Maybe for the first time. Who knows, right? This guy is really into owls. Mm. Uh, <laughs> that's what he's devoted his life to, is owls and gadgetry uh, and the combination. So he's he says, so now, let's listen to how he talks. So he says, you live with John. You didn't get cancer. Maybe nobody got cancer. So he's just saying, you know, the computer is going to have a list of people that work for Nova Express. 
And this is weird, right? We need to figure out what's going on, and it sure seems like there's a mass killer out there. And Rorschach's the one that's had the mass killer theory, theory this whole time, so they feel like we got to bust Rorschach out of prison because we need his information. He's the one that's been doing the investigation. Um, yeah, Dan, you know, his, his owl outfit. His owl outfit and his cadetry and how he's like, you know, now wearing black. Yeah. Wearing a black t-shirt. Right. Because he's tough. He's highly yeah. confident now, you know. He... He's confident. <laughs> wonder why. I wonder why Dan got confident all of a sudden, right? <laughs> so Dan's also headstrong. So he's saying, hey, you lived with John the whole time. You didn't get any cancer. Like, what do you, you know what I mean? Like, you definitely didn't get any cancer. So mm-hmm. obviously something's going on because Laura was with John for like 20 years. I mean, we lose track of it. it's the second generation, but it's the one that went on and on, you know what I mean, for a long time. That's a long relationship. Right. Um, so, you know, she she was with him for so long. Dan figures that can't possibly be the cause of cancer. So he's thinking like, hey, man, this Rorschach theory has legs. Right. And Rorschach's the one that did the research, so we need to get him out. Right. You know, beyond any sort of, you know, beyond any sort of hot fat incident. <laughs> Which is what they call the, the dude trying to stab him and him basically just dealing with it right away. Mm-hmm. Um you know, so uh, so Lori and Dan kind of have a little conversation here. We talked about this last time. Dan's weirdo little, like Dan's obsession or, or fe- his little fetish he right. has about uh-huh. co- getting dressed up as a costume. Uh-huh. And he says, ha, 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 that was your idea. Like, come on, Dan. We all know. <laughs> you made it obvious. Um, anyway, so they talk about going on patrols a little bit. And then we see that the, maybe the... Um, the aftermath of their of their uh, flight mm-hmm. uh, at the bottom of this page here. Yeah, all the oh, clothes are all off and everything. You know, everything strewn about. Strewn about, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the aftermath of a, of a pleasant evening spent in Archimedes. They, they, they are definitely in it because we got Lori's hand on the back of um, um, Dan and everything. So, so mm-hmm. they're like... You know, in in, in, a, in a previous um, page, you know, Lori's already talking about we're like we're we're like young lovers. The world could end tomorrow, and this is how we're going to spend our Sunday. <laughs> we're planning about <laughs> we're planning on busting out a homicidal maniac. <laughs> you know, she's saying that this is crazy what we're doing and everything. She she's she's still getting caught up in the whole. Okay, well this this so so this is happening. You know, so yeah. so we're going to do this. <laughs> you know, but Dan's winning her over. He's winning her yeah, over. She, she's yes, like, well, is. I had nine different routes over the rooftops of Washington D.C. Man, so, you man, know. man of action. You know, she Lori's getting caught up in everything. You know, Dan is all yeah. of a sudden he got his mojo back, and you know, even though it's just this, just seems like crazy in Lori's eyes and everything. I uh, she she may be getting just turned on by it. <laughs> 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 oh man. Hey, you know, it's uh, you know, it's all good. So Dan is concerned that someone's going to use John to trigger Armageddon. Right. And he says it's serious. And Rorschach's got the information. And uh, it's a life. It's a matter of life and death. Right. And now we go to the uh, to the prison where we see, um, you know, big figures talking to the, uh, you know, the uh, the guard who's designed who's assigned to stand right outside of Rorschach's cell and to make sure that nothing happens for him because. You know, if we've learned anything, it's that if, the, if there's retribution to be had, it's the state that deserves it. It's not individuals, and that's an important I love, philosophical concept. I, I love how the, the this particular page, you know, displays this panel and reveals big figure, you know. <laughs> oh, that, 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 how's, how's your wife, Milani? That little, like, <laughs> the bubble that just goes straight down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, 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 his eyes are forward, and then all of a sudden, you know, you know, the, the bubble... <laughs> He looks down. <laughs> the, 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 the prison guard looks down and everything, and you still got the um the two bodyguards and everything just yeah, looking yeah. at him. And you know he's the one that has the power in this in this in these scenes, <laughs> or, or right. so we and, think. <laughs> and that's so funny because like he's looking at the bodyguards, he's like, "Hey, get out of here!" And then Big Figure talks. He looks down and he's terrified. And Big Figure's like, "Yeah, you got a kid, right?" And he's like, "God, oh, man, come on." <laughs> he's like, "All right, all right, you can talk to him." And then we we're treated to. Uh, to big figure, tiny, tiny big figure, mm-hmm. uh, who says it's been a long time, Rorschach, and then, uh, and then Rorschach, <laughs> Rorschach. Oh, this is Watchmen's. This is this is Watchmen humor here, boy. <laughs> he says big figure, small world. A big figure is like four feet, like you know, three feet tall. So I want to I want to point something out here, and this is and this is like a, this is a, such a funny like threat scene. It's you know sort of uh, it's really 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 well written and really 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 well done. Um, but I, I, big figure is is over here threatening Rorschach like uh-huh. like it's Rorschach from twenty years ago, uh-huh. right? Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm gonna get you, and I will see what happens. It's been twenty years, and and he's like, you know, he's coming in to threaten the guard. He's gonna threaten Rorschach like that's gonna do anything, right? <laughs> 
He's, uh, he's just like, well, we'll see. He's smoking a big cigar. You know, he's talking a big game. And he's talking a big game for a little guy. <laughs> 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 and 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 the whole time Rorschach is just looking, you know, face forward. He's not phased or anything. Yeah, that what's he say? I love, I'm going to say all these jokes because they're all amazing. <laughs> he says, "Well, that guy." She says, "Dude, you hit with the frying oil. He's going to die. And when he does, this place is going to erupt in a riot, and then you die by inches." And then Rorschach says, "Tall order." <laughs> 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 and that that upsets, I guess, with one of the bodyguards. He's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Michael, typ- Michael's like, come and get him. Yeah, come yeah, get yeah. Him. Typical henchman. <laughs> the big figure says, we'll get him soon enough. Oh, I don't know why man. I think that's his voice. We'll get him pretty soon. <laughs> I love the idea of the guy talking like that and being like that, like direct and violent. Uh, There's one crummy lock. We'll be back for it. Think about it. <laughs> That probably should be how he sounds, man. Oh, man. I know. Whatever. I, I don't care. It's just in my head. I'm allowed to do that in my head if I want for a fictional, you know, for a fictional evil, evil character. I don't if I'm allowed to make fun of him. Oh, man. So so Rorschach's just kind of doesn't really change his expression or anything. He's great. Rorschach sort of, ever since he's been captured, has this grim resignation where he's just like, well, it is what it is. Right. <laughs> that whole I'm locked in, you know, you're locked in here with me thing. He's like, okay, if this is how you want to go, <laughs> we can play. He's like, we'll play that game. Right, right. Uh, it, it's sort of commenting on, too, Ror- Rorschach really doesn't have a plan. He just takes right. things as it comes. You know, yep. so this this situation here, it is what it is. But, you know, mm-hmm. if something happens, Rorschach is prepared for it. Yes. Well, he's also improvisational, right? Yeah. So he's good at using the things he finds, which we know because he takes all the sugar cubes and the beans and all that stuff. He's just making do with what he can, wow. you know? That's like a Batman tendency right there. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> One of what? <laughs> We need a sound effect for Batman tendencies. <laughs> you know that you know that Batman thing from the sixty six show where I yeah, 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 yeah. We need yeah, to start driving that in. Oh man, all right. I, I'll Google and I mean find if we that. can find it. Whatever, Edison, I don't want you to go to too much trouble. I just feel like whenever I hear you say Batman tendencies, that's what I hear in the back of my head. Right. No 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 no. Oh man. All right. Yep. That's all yeah. All right, so so that's a that's a really that's that's it's setting up confrontation because Big Figure was the one that mm-hmm. Dan and uh, Rorschach, you know, got together and teamed up to stop him. That was how they got together. Right. That's how their friendship began in '65, right before the Crime Busters thing. Just to timestamp all this, and this is back. Of course, you know, I, I just want to put this is the thing about this that I, I don't know how much information Big Figure has about what Rorschach has become in the intervening twenty years. Right. You know. Right. It's it's almost like this this idea where. You know, comics in the 80s went grim and dark and, you know, the opposite of that Batman 66 series, right? Right. But Big Figure's conflict with Rorschach happened during the time of the Batman 66 series. Like, that's when it took place. So you feel you feel, almost feel like, you know, like, Big Figure should be a lot more terrified of Rorschach than this, right? Like, these guys seem to have missed that entire, that entire evolution of him, right? Right. So for some reason he's just like we'll see. He's like I'm gonna trap you in a situation, and we'll see what happens. You won't do you won't do the things I think you need to do to get out of this. <laughs> and he does not know that Rorschach is willing and able to do those. Things. Oh yeah, yeah. Rorschach is ready. That's the great thing about him. He's just you know he like I said take it as he co- take it take it as it comes and you know yeah. he's he's ready to improvise if need be. So he's Rorschach. He's not, you know what I mean? He's not Walter anymore. That, and that's the difference between him and everybody else, right? He mm. doesn't have, there's nothing left of himself to protect. He's just this symbol now. Yeah, well, now Kovacs is the mask. Yes, Kovacs is the mask. Kind of like Clark Kent, you know, the Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne dichotomy, right? <clears throat> right. Like Clark Kent is Superman's mask. <clears throat> Kovacs was always Rorschach's mask. Right. So that's a Superman tendency. But, you know, not a really serious one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so next, the detective shows up. Detective Stephen Fine shows up looking for Dan Dryberg. Great callback in the um, first panel here to um, yes <laughs> to to the um, to the break in that um, Rorschach did with this um, with this locksmith, you know, changing the locks and everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so to closely pay attention, um, yeah, the the locksmith is there because of what happened a few issues ago. This what didn't happen just last issue. Uh, right. What was when did that happen? Like the second issue? It's like, it's <laughs> that, or, uh, it's like a callback to um, you know, to their to what Rorschach tells them to get a better lock when he drops off the newspaper, right? Right. He said, "You gotta get a better lock. Don't get such a cheap lock." <laughs> Throws the paper, and so here's the locksmith showing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a dude in a you know 
the dude with the the hat that says Gordian Knot. Lock Company and the detective shows up. Detective Stephen Fine. Right. Says, I'm looking for Dan Dryberg. And he says, oh, hey. He says, hey, you knew Eddie Blake. And Dan's like, sure, okay, yeah, I did. He's like, well, you're at his, uh, you keep weird company. It was you and Veet and Dr. Manhattan and... It's a weird, uh, weird list of people to put together, right? Because <laughs> who are you? Like those two guys, I know you. You're just some some guy. And he says, uh, "Oh, I met V through a charity." He's like, "Uh huh, sure, sure." And he's like, "He's like, oh, look at this. Mm-hmm. You know, look at this. We got these sugar cubes. The sugar cubes. You know, they only come in a catering thing. Hey, you wouldn't believe this is what we found on Rorschach, right? Isn't that crazy? Just chewing sugar. <laughs> he knows." <laughs> He's making all these threats. He's like, oh, look at this calendar here. Look at all them owls. <laughs> you know, oh, you got a lot of owls there. And he says, hey, you know, uh, you know, rescuing some fire victims. Look, no one's got a problem with that. No one's even mad. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what he says. He's like, but, but, you know, if this goes any further, and maybe you're going to get a visit. It isn't going to be so nice. <laughs> That's, kind of the, That's kind of the vibe I get from this, right? Sounds like an old 70s TV show. Well, yeah, that's who this guy is, right? He's a detective yep. from like, it's like, hey, you know what? You know, maybe, uh, maybe you don't go out adventuring no more. <laughs> I love it. He says, I love it. He says, "I'll be seeing you, Mister Dryberg." <laughs> <laughs> that's what he says when he leaves. Uh-huh. And then he goes, "Sugar cubes, weird shit, huh?" Ah, well, I'll be seeing you. <laughs> 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 oh man, straight out of straight out of the seventies, eighties. He's threatening him with nineteen seventy seven. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I mean, you know that, that that's all this stuff's going on here. And then, Lor- you know, uh, Lori comes down the stairs and he's like, "What was that all about?" And then Dan's like, uh, "You know, I'm sure someone's already called the Rockefeller base saying you're not around." And Dan realizes that he's the only like untethered connection everybody has to her. <laughs> so like everybody else, it makes sense to that would like you know hang out with her be an associate of hers but he's just some you know without without his persona he's just damn oh, okay. he's just some guy some nerdy guy oh, that writes oh, about oh, out hold on just to go back again to, 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 yeah. to the um to the detective he he's he's talking about the in the not on the page nine the third panel um or the sixth panel those characters that dame of course he said that dame yeah <laughs> that, that dame that, still specter <laughs> that dame is spilk specter what do you think she is uh mr al man <laughs> the lumber room you got a lumber room and a brownstone in mid manhattan and a bunch of th- a bunch of pictures of owls everywhere sugar cubes where's shit? sugar cubes i mean i'm not telling you to read between the lines here daddy <laughs> Like, Detective oh. Fine is not very He's not very fine or subtle Oh, not at all, <laughs> not dirty. at all, not at all That's exactly how he sounds, you. guys <laughs> That's right? exactly how he sounds Is that the dude? That's oh. how it sounds when you read it, right? <laughs> yeah Okay, good that, I want to make sure I'm not the only dude Oh, that dame Hey, sweet cherry and sugar cubes, oh You know, these only come in catering packs, huh? Oh, man, that Like, you know, no one else has got these sugar cubes mm-hmm. Anyway That is crazy All uh, right as uh, as Dan turns away, it says, hey, we got a deadline. We better get out of here. We're not yeah. going to be safe. They yep. know who we are. Mm-hmm. And once we do what we're about to do, they're going to come flying in here. And his his attention is, you see that attention spark at the bottom of page nine where he's looking at the lock. Yeah, right. right. The new the lock. The new lock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now we, we go over to the new Frontiersman office. They're putting their uh, stuff together for the 31st. Uh, you know, the, uh, Seymour has a picture of the, uh, the missing writer. He's like, what's going on with this? This seems like a big story. And he's like, I want a hamburger. Give me a hamburger. <laughs> uh, you know, cause this is a, this is sort of like the, uh, you know, what is this? The right wing conspiracy sort of newspaper, right? Everyone sort of thinks these guys are crazy. Yeah. It would be akin to like, you know, these websites out here that are not really yeah. mainstream websites, but you know, they just mm-hmm. pop up and, you know, report on anything, you know? Um, right, right, right. Um, notice um, Seymour's um, T-shirt here. <laughs> yeah, right. The smiley face. Mm-hmm. Yep. Some people really like the comedian a lot. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they really were into the comedian. Um, so, uh, so now, now we sort of get like a, it's like a, a cut and paste montage, right? Where you see Lori and and Dan are now getting ready. They're looking at a diagram of the of the pen and putting on their outfits. Oh, did we mention that um that that Seymour's holding the picture of um the missing. The missing writer. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, he's saying, hey, what's going on? This is weird. Yeah. You know, they're talking about the tenement rescue. They're putting basically together a, um, like, the new frontiersmen are putting together, like, a, uh, like, a kind of, like, a nice, mm-hmm. like, hey, this is the other side of the coin. We don't hate the vigilantes piece, right? It's like, you should love the vigilantes. You miss the vigilantes. Right. <laughs> okay. And now we are looking at. Uh, well, hold up, though. Are, so, so, oh, so, yeah. so Seymour is holding his picture up. 
This is a yeah. key thing here that it, it that the um that the editor just totally disregards. So it's it's just funny how you know they they put that that plant that seed there, you know, plant that right. little Easter egg there, you know, um as a um call to things that are about to come based on this missing missing artist here, you know. Right. <laughs> Seymour thinks it's got legs. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the, uh, you know, his editor does not, <laughs> does not think it has any legs. Not at all. Not at all. No. So just totally uh, and, disregard it. But anyway, that, yeah. that, that, that will be a sign of major things to come anyway. And we cut to, I mean, we see him, right? It was a Mr. Shea, right? Yep. Name? Max Shea. And we see him with, uh, Miss Manish and she's drawing a sketch of some sort of incomprehensible monster. They're off on an island. They say, hey, I can't wait to get out of here. You know, we're going to say goodbye to our baby and our creation. Uh, you know, they say, well, when you had the young eating its way out of the mother, it was insane. And, um, you know, uh, there's something under there's something over there. There's a ship and a tarp and a big and a drawing of an, you know, a, a terrible nightmare monster with a right like an octopus face. It's just something disturbing. crazy, you know disgusting looking <laughs> yeah yeah it says let's give it a let's give our baby a finally rinse over and check for a family resemblance so shay's being kind of funny about that because obviously it seems like sounds like they're making a movie special effect right, right. that's what they're doing mm-hmm. over here and they want the effects to be real and you know visceral and so they're building a thing okay and now uh we see dan and Lori are gassing up or well, powering up Ar- archie well, the um, if if you also look at how they are presenting these panels and everything, no um, no no word balloons or anything or thought bubbles yep. or whatever are presented in these bottom panels. Uh, so these this is meant to be happening in conjunction of um of other events. Excuse me, um, other <laughs> of other events that are happening, you know, in the universe yeah. and everything. So you mm-hmm. know, um, they're Lori and um Dan are you know getting themselves together get, they're they're getting ready to uh break out rorschach and you yeah. know um Lori's powering up the owl and everything and, uh, and dan's giving her a thumbs up mm-hmm. he likes what he sees he loves what he sees <laughs> and then hollis mason we w- w- this scene with hollis is designed to show us give us the idea of the news right the possible nuclear annihilation mm-hmm. the you know the new frontiersmen are like, hey, costume. You know, costume adventurers are great, and they attack this dude who is uh, on Doctor Manhattan's. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, Doctor Manhattan's thing, and uh, right. uh, Hollis makes a um, Hollis makes a um, <laughs> a joke about Rodin, who's the guy who made the um, the Thinker. Right, that's a reference to the Thinker. And then then there's talk about the tenement rescue, and Hollis finishes his jack o' lantern, and he says, "Pretty good. Can't hardly wait till it gets dark." Uh oh. It's going to get dark. And then Lori and Dan are ready. Now, Arch Ar- <laughs> is ready. They're ready to zip out of their, um, they're ready to zip out of their, uh, lair, mm-hmm. the roost. And then we go, we go back to the newsstand where Gus is talking about the, uh, Gazette. We don't have any Gazettes yet. They're a little bit late. Um, we get more Dark Freighter. Um, I'm talking to my, you know, I'm talking to my dead, uh, dead <coughs> shipmates who are bloated and I'm floating, you know, trying to float to safety on. And uh, yeah, and these succession oh, of um pages, um, escalation is meant to be, um, I guess, conveyed here because the events are happening, you know, things are, yeah. you know, in motion. So, you know, when we get to this newsstand thing, you know, we see this gang just descending upon like the newsstand, and um, you know, things are just escalating. Yeah, there's a the top knot guy says something un, not not nice about the uh, the super guys, and uh, then. Uh, Joey shows up and says, I split up with Alina, I need a gazette. And the gazettes get there, and uh, the news is not great. So there's a riot at Sing Sing because the guy died. Mm-hmm. The thing that we were waiting on, we were talking, Big Figure's been waiting on this, and the guy's dead, and now it's there's going to be a riot, and five are dead now, before anything has happened, that we see, right? Right. Like, this is already, you know, roiling the riot. And then we see, uh, you know, the Rorschach is being, so... Dan is now arriving, so they're getting toward, you know, they're flying toward Sing Sing. Rorschach is, is uh, he's in his cell, and the prisoners are coming for him, but Big Figure and his guys are able to hold them at bay. And then uh, he says, Big Figure says, hey, uh, everybody's getting some turkey, but I get to do the carving. <laughs> And 
And I just don't think Big Figure is aware of what, <laughs> like, it just seems like he's coming at him like a, you know what I mean? Like a, a 60 comic book villain, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think, I guess it's meant to be played like that, too, which is a really great yeah. trope um, uh-huh. as, as opposed to... Um, uh, at, as as he's coming into a character who's really se- means serious business and everything, so you know you got yeah. this character trope um, being presented in Big Figure, and then you got the other character <laughs> who has his Batman tendency. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One Batman tendency here is that like you could imagine the different eras of Batman. Like you know, I, I go to Batman sixty six because it is so you know it's so distinctive. Right. But that TV show where you have all those, like, the Joker was was yelling what? Like, he was going delicious, delicious, and running around and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you could just imagine him running into the Batman from like the Dark Knight Returns, oh, and having man. a bad day. Oh, yeah, <laughs> a real that, bad day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> big, big figure like, is like the you know the penguin or whatever from the '66 show or whatever. Yes. And then you know yeah. he runs into like the you know the um. The, He's like, the I'm Dark gonna get Knight you, Batman. Rorschach. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and Rorschach's like, we'll see what happens. Oh man. He's got an arc welder. He's going to cut through the lock, although, and I'm going to point this out. He could have just got the got the key off the guard, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just yeah, like, got it much, from him. I mean, pretty much, you know, they you already know? disabled and, you know, took him out. And, you know, yeah. they, they got this far, so they had to take out the guard or got him from someplace. But they want to do things the hard way. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the they got the machine shop. They got an arc welder. You know, they're going to use it. They're going to, like I said, they're going to do some roast and some carbon. <laughs> I guess then, I guess uh, it wouldn't be as dramatic as if they just got a key, right? <laughs> yeah, right? it wouldn't be as fun, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then Rorschach starts taking off his shirt, and then uh, Lawrence is like, "I ought to get in there and make him a little shorter." And I don't hear any of that tall order, small world shit. And then Rorschach says, "Fat chance to the dude." <laughs> And then the guy like reaches. He's like, "I'm gonna get him. Let me at him. Let me at him." Like that, you know, mm-hmm. reaching at him. And Rorschach just takes the shirt he just took off, breaks the dude's fingers, and ties his arms up. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Makes it so that they can't get him out. Oh man, poor yeah, poor, uh, poor guy, man. He's about to. Oh, <laughs> uh, poor Lawrence. And Michael's like, "Reach through there. I cut those bars." They're like, "I can't. I can't." And then uh, uh, Big Figure says, "Well, I've been waiting 24 years for this. Uh, you know, this is my way of revenge. Kill him." <laughs> and then. Uh, Michael does kill him. He kills. Uh, yeah, he's he's, he kills he's not going to let you know a, a mirror, you know a, a, a hand tie, you know block his his sense of revenge and everything. So the mere death of a henchman <laughs> like, doesn't matter. Who cares that, about that? That's not Batman sixty six, but hey, no, you know it's 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 if it, it, it's how it, things escalate and go to his extreme <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. Watchmen universe. That's true. So so Rorschach is now like the spurt of blood from Lawrence is now covers Rorschach. And he says, uh, what does Big Figure says? He's like, what do we want to do now? He says, Big Figure says, we get him. That's what we're going to do. And he says, we'll, f- we'll show him what this, we're going to find out what the score is as Lawrence dies. And then Rorschach just standing there says, one nothing, your move, come and get me. <laughs> like totally unfazed by any of the just uh, insane uh, violence that he just witnessed. Uh, Rorschach got such a sense of humor, man. I mean, how can you not? You know, that's what it's, <laughs> once you realize everything's a joke, right? He was a big fan of the comedian. Ah, uh, yeah. Great callback. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, you know, Arky is flying into the prison. They've located the area where the prisoners have control. And so uh, Dan turns on the screechers, which apparently is just an insanely high-pitched disabling audio sound. So it's just a scream. Uh, while that's going on, Michael is cutting through the smell. He's cutting through Lawrence and cutting through the, you know, the, the lock. Mm-hmm. He smells something. He says, you hear that screaming? And uh, what is a uh, big figure says? Uh, yes, ignore it. I want to. I want to smell this son of a bitch cook it. He's so tiny. He's got. I just feel like he has to have that little tiny voice. He, <laughs> he does, right. Things, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So Rorschach gets on his bunk. Michael's like, "Oh, he's gonna cry. He's getting up on his bunk." He opens up. Says, "There it is. I got you now." And then uh, Rorschach kicks kicks his toilet, busts it, causes a pool of water to form under Michael, which electrocutes him. Oh, man, such a brilliant Rorschachery type, Batman tendency type thing. That improvisation. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to use what I have, and you can't beat um, me because I'm willing to do the things necessary. Mm-hmm. Yep, and he sure does. And, you know, um, yeah. Big Figure is just... He's just like, oh, man, I lost all my men. (laughs) uh Uh-oh. He said, "Uh uh-oh, because he didn't think Rorschach was going to do that, right? Mm -hmm. He looks surprised. Like He's like, Rorschach, like the Rorschach I knew wouldn't have done that. He just totally, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like the thing about the the hot fat thing was self-defense, right? Right. 
So this is just more of Rorschach just being like, we're only gonna, I'm only dealing with things one way now, right? And you had your chance. You're in prison. You, if you act up here, that's that's another. That's it. Right. That's like your right. third strike. Yep. Exactly. So then he's. What does he say then? Oh, I never disposed of sewage with a toilet before. Seems obvious, really. Right. And he says two nothing, and then big figure runs away. One point I do want to make: up till now, in in this whole story, Watchmen graphic novel, up till now, we've never really had a action scene. You know, a live mm-hmm. action scene. We had like flashbacks and stuff, but this is really the first instance of action really happening with the break in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the prison break. You know, the the big prison break. You know, happening with the um, you know. Um, uh, what Rorschach has just done and what Lori and Dan are doing, you know, breaking into the prison and everything. So mm-hmm. for uh, a big commentary on superheroes where action is just, you, you can't really have, you not really have action <laughs> in a, in a superhero yeah. book. This is a really stark, um, you know, difference and a really great way to comment on how uh, in a common world, action doesn't really happen often. <laughs> right. You know, so for this to happen in this world is is sort of like in line to what reality might be if there were actually costume adventurers. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the uh, the lights go out when the electro- execution happens, mm-hmm. and Rorschach pulls the plug, and Dan and Lori are sort of like frantically trying to find him. They're running through the you know the prison mob and you know getting into these fist fights with everyone, just incapacitating people to get to the solitary confinement cells. And Rorschach calmly strolls out of his cell in the pool of Lawrence's blood with his hands in his pockets while Big Figure runs away from him in panic. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, While Lori and Dan are trying to find him, uh, Dan says it's like uh, it's hard to reach Rorschach. It feels like they're in the Twilight Zone. (laughs) And Rorschach is just like, you know, we cut back and forth between this blood red Rorschach walking slowly. And Lori and Dan trying to, you know, what's the smell? What's going on? They find the, you know, Rorschach cell and it's all, you know, it's a charnel house. It's all these these guys that came from Rorschach that didn't, you know, didn't make it. And uh, they do run into Rorschach right outside the bathroom. They go, hey, Rorschach. And he says, uh, well, I'm sorry, I hope we're not interrupting anything. He's like, nope, just got to use the the restroom. (laughs) And he goes in and Lori's really, really like, uh, really mad about it this is hilarious and dan and dan's like i remember one time i was gonna make an arrest and uh i was trying to it was this dope dealer i had to go to the bathroom and he just you know vanished while i was gone i had to redesign my whole costume <laughs> he's going back and in, laurie's like <laughs> he's going back in the past and everything Lori is just yeah. like why are, we, are we doing, doing do? this <laughs> yeah. so, and it's like oh, be flushed <laughs> Rorschach comes back out and they're like, "How are you doing?" And he's like, "Nope, oh, did what I have to do." Mm-hmm. And they walk away. And uh, Lori is still. Lori says, "Oh, we did." Yeah, yeah, she's so funny. She, yeah, she's uh, she's not enthusiastic about this whole idea, period, and everything. So right. their interaction. Says, oh, I hate to do something reckless like breaking into a prison. And he's like, "That's good advice." They walk away, <laughs> and there's just a pool of blood coming out from under the door. So, you know, big figure has been dealt with, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> he flushed the he flushed the trash down the drain and everything. Yeah, use just use the toilet to devo- dispose of sewage. Right, I've never thought of it before. Uh, so he says, "Hey, it's good to see oh, you in uniform, man. Daniel." And uh, and this Yusepic, uh never liked your uniform. <laughs> so he says, "Like I didn't, I don't care for yours. Nothing personal, though. Right, I'm just sort of uh, prude." <laughs> And they uh, they say, uh, you know, what's he implying? There's a conspiracy, and like Dan's kind of believing what Rorschach does, but Lori doesn't. And they all get into Arky and fly away. And Rorschach looks back at the burning prison. And they say, hey, we got to get back to the Owl Roost because they're going to, you know, that cop's going to show up here because this is a little bit of a step beyond what he said I could do. Uh, so that's the, that's what's going on there. And uh, Lori changes the calendar over to November with the big bird getting the little bird. And they say, we got to get all our stuff here. And he's like, Lori, why are you changing my calendar? Like they're, they're running away, right? Right. He's changing the calendar. It's going to be November in like an hour. Uh, and then Lori goes to get some of her stuff out of the living room. And who's sitting there? Dr. Manhattan. Dr. Manhattan. And he just says, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. In that, in that <laughs> Seinfeld <laughs> voice. Uh, yeah. Hello. I'm the Silk Spectre. <laughs> Oh, uh, Lori, Lori, the poor Lori. She's just going through so much stuff. You know, she, 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 know. she's having upon a prison break and everything, and um, she's probably disgusted for the fact of um, um, that it's Rorschach that they're breaking out. You know, he smells but, so bad, probably. 
you know, the stinky misogynist <laughs> murderer that she never liked that, that always has something sort of mean to say uh-huh, to her about yep. everything has to co- has to comment on her outfit. Uh huh. Yeah, super judgmental. You know, you know and they're breaking super him judgmental. out. <laughs> right. She's doing him a favor, and he's like, "I never liked your outfit." Mm-hmm. I tell you, he has to say that. <laughs> and so she, Lori says, "John, aren't you on Mars?" And he's like, "I am on Mars." Like, what are you? T- you know, you remember I could duplicate myself, right? That was a whole thing in Chapter Three. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then she says, this is all do- deus ex machina. And uh, he says, out of God, the machine. And he says, yep, I guess it is. And then he says, well, look, we're going to go to Mars. We're going to talk about stuff. I figured I'd come get you because you're going to be in Mars in an hour anyway. So I must, uh, he was like, I-, I figured there was no other way you were getting to Mars <laughs> other than me coming to pick you up. So I did. <laughs> and then uh, Dan's like, Lori's talking to, you know, her, her, uh, her ex-boyfriend who is, you know, obviously has zero percent body fat and can control matter with his mind i mean that would be intimidating right I mean, I got, <laughs> yeah i'm with you on this Pre- everybody pretty much and uh, he says look uh, he says this is where because mars is where we're going to have a conversation where you try to convince me to save the world and she says save the world what are you talking about and then dan's like what's going on what are you doing you can't just leave with him and meanwhile the police are there so rorschach's like dan uh, daniel they're ringing the doorbell daniel they're 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 knocking on the door they're pounding on the door and then Lori says, fine, I'll go with John. And they both disappear. This is a great comment on how um, not so much small minded of Lori's thinking, but how she's not thinking of the bigger picture. So you got all right. these, quote unquote, men around her thinking of like a big picture, you know, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know if this is like a, a, a thing to comment on how she is as a, as a woman or whatever, or how the thing, uh, how the way the story was wrote back in 1985. Um, mm-hmm. but she's not think she, she, in this instance of where, you know, Dr. Manhattan is talking about her or talking about her, um, convincing him to save the world. Yeah. You know, at this point in time, she's not putting it all together, you know? Right. She doesn't. Yeah. She's like reeling still because she doesn't mm-hmm. understand that like the piece that she was doing there with Preston Rorschach out of prison mm-hmm. is, you know, doesn't, how does that fit into the overall mm-hmm. narrative of the end of humanity mm-hmm. pretty much? Right. Yep. Yep. You know, and then, uh, yeah, she, so they disappear, they disappear. And then, like Dan says, I guess she won't be traveling with us. Let's get out of here. Dan is sad. Uh, um, Rorschach is ready yeah. to go <laughs> because yep. they're at the door, you know. It's time to go. Rorschach's not really interested in going back to prison. It seems like a non fun place. <laughs> and so the kick police the door. He's like, come on, the place is lit up. They could still be here. So they finally bust in the door. And that, that lock you see the face of that lock just sort of flying off like what it was that right yeah right what was that thing even doing he said this will stop an army didn't stop nothing nothing right so right away just fell off and you see it with the little attention you know Mm -hmm. attention flash Mm -hmm. and rorschach and dan retreat to the roost detective fine is uh yelled at he's like they better be here because you came and gave him a warning he's like i thought a warning would be enough i didn't know he was gonna play this pal's escape (laughs) and so he let him know he had the goods on him and he still did it anyway still did it anyway Uh, you know yeah rorschach and night out that exactly rorschach and night out jump up in the uh and arky they go flying down the stairs i knew he was hiding something arky leaves someone takes a pot shot at it but there's an entire empty owl's roost down here yep and that's the end Uh, of the owl cave that's the end of the owl cave right it's gone yeah so yeah, at this point, um, nobody's going back to their regular lives. <laughs> yeah, that's done. This is done. So they're in it to win it. They are about to save the world, people. Yep. And if not, though, I mean, there's not much else for them to do. You know, they have what well, he has maybe some secret identities, but how can you hide being, you know? Yeah. I, don't know, I feel like it'll be hard to hide. How hard to hide being the owl? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I Pretty mean? Much. Uh, for too long. Okay. So now we reach the Black Freighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the Black Freighter sailor is thinking of his uh, fish eaten, fleshy, you know, uh, dead f- dead shipmates. While we hear the over the overlay of, you know, first one's ta- someone's talking about what it's like to see a nuclear explosion. Someone else is blaming on Doctor Manhattan, and then we see that the uh, the the freighter guy has re- run aground and uh, he's he's finally reached shore. Right, and now yeah, now they're. The, the, the we, then we have on um, this is interposed, you know, inter interjected with like the gang, <clears throat> excuse me, right. you know, at the newsstand and they're arguing to get, you know, arguing with each other. And they just got news about um, the the night owl breaking out uh, Rorschach from prison. The um, gang is just 
like incensed at this point. So they're like sprung him. Those bastards, they do whatever they the like. Night owl, <laughs> the night owl, that guy lives over a garage. Right, right, even, right, right. They don't understand. There's no, you know, they don't understand that that's not the same guy. It's not guy. the same guy, but do they care? No, they're a gang. No, and they, they don't just, care. you know, take to the streets. <laughs> yeah. And so then, um, you know, Gus calls him Kitty Heads. He's like, get out of here. You're running around yelling just like old times. And then we see the, you know, the, the gang running through the streets. Uh, we see the, um, this is all intercut with the, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the Black Freighter. And the sailor for the Black Freighter has run aground. I lifted my uh, uncomprehending eyes to the heavens and saw instead the earth. So he's uh, he's reached ground. We see the, the gang is rushing to Hollis's fix him up. And the, uh, the sailor is now a specter of revenge is what he's become. Yeah, it's 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 sad this Hollis this uh, Hollis scene in here. Um, he's he's basically you know it's Halloween night, you know he's just yeah. waiting for kids to come to his door and everything. And the last thing he expects is um, this to happen. And Hollis is you know now that we've sort of reached the end for him, uh, I don't even want to talk about this scene. Although it's intercut between his memories of his old time mm-hmm. and his dog fighting with him and. Right, you know, something seems like something bad happens to the dog, and, and he is killed with his gratitude statue. Is the the item they used to to murder him? Well, the, Hollis, it's it's, it's a, a, I mean, not to interrupt, but it's a it's yeah. a great thing of, of the violence, both um, mm-hmm. you know, the flashback and the um, the 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 live scene here, you know, of what's happening. You know, he's doing his typical superheroing and everything, the the trophy, what you would see in a regular comic book. But the, vibe, with the Wonder Dog, right? And, with the Run the Dog and everything. But you know, in um, present time in 1985, here he's getting pummeled. He's, he's just an old man. Yeah, he's just an old man. It's, you know, he's not Night Owl anymore. Sad. Yeah, and uh, you know that's kind of the end for Hollis. Hollis Mason, you know, for me, he's the he's the one that seems to have the purest motivations out of anybody mm-hmm. that we encounter because you know he's one of the first people to come in, and I, and I think that. There's a lot of there's allusions to the other golden era people either having, you know, being in it specifically for money. I mean, you know, Dollar Bill was hired. You know right. what I mean? Like it was a job for him. Right. And uh, you know, Silk Spectre was about monetization. The comedian obviously had some very very deep seated problems. And he just enjoyed violence. But Hollis, you know, Hollis sort of describes himself as getting into superheroism because he wants to you know prevent bad things from happening, he, the sad things wa- from he happening. He wants to be a good guy. Well, he is so a good he may guy. Be yeah, and he stayed he stayed true to it. Like, you know what I mean? He never profited off it. He went and, you know, did his regular retirement with a regular pension and got a regular job mm-hmm. and you know, for for him to die like this is uh it's sad. Yeah, it's 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 a really sad commentary on um, you know, um just 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 being a superhero, you know, costume adventure. I keep saying superheroes. There's no superheroes in this graphic novel but Dr. Manhattan. But we typically right. call superheroes superheroes when they put on costumes, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, and right. actually do things beyond what, um, I guess, normal people do. Well, I guess that does make them super, you know, in a way. Super. Yeah. But um, the way he um, the way he goes out here, the way his last days are, you know, from the beginning of his um, um, costume adventuring to the way he you know these these gang members just beat him up pummel him you know he's he's uh, he's mm-hmm. old you know he's done nothing to anybody at this point but the gang is just young you know they they feel that you know that um they already hated like mass adventures and everything so they just this is just giving them a reason to um to to resort to violence to this guy and yeah. he can't really defend himself at this point and it's and it's all resulting from you know it's is the blowback it's the sacri- it's the um the consequence of Dan deciding to break out Rorschach yeah that's what because that's what you know this is all collateral damage from that yes and, um, yes 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 things have it, escalation happens and progress you know thing it, it shows how connected the universe is like I was saying before mm-hmm. you know um an event a, a, a cause an event happens in one aspect of the story and it um um causes this to happen well Hollis also is this is also a consequence of Hollis taking his mask off too yeah yes. they knew where he was they knew who yes. he is he published a yes. book you know his dad yes. knew him like this is yeah this is who he is and you know eventually um the stuff you did in the past comes back you know not everybody likes that. right <laughs> you know it, it, even though you've done good things 
Um, I think Alan Moore, Dave Gibbons, John Higgins, they're showing that, you know, these guys have, but reality happens. Yep. Reality does happen to these guys. And you're not, you know, unlike, you know, regular superhero stuff where you just continue on to your next adventure at the end. Um, these people have retired and, you know, the end, the very end has come for them. Right. So that's that's it for Hollis, you know. Um, the end of the the coda here. We always get these neat little <clears throat> like in media things that they show us, like or Hollis Mason's book excerpts. And now we get to see that issue of the New Frontiersman from October thirty first, mm-hmm. nineteen eighty five. And um, there's some pretty crazy right wing stuff. You see that cartoon that has some very very anti semitic semitic things about Jews <laughs> controlling media and money and things, right? And uh, Hector Godfrey's, you know, talking about coked out commies and things like that. And then in the back, uh, there's uh, the story about the missing writer. And we see that uh, it's not just Shea, right? It's, it's Shea and Manish. We saw Hero Manish in the in you know, the, the flash over that that um, that uh, flash. Right. For, no, it's not a flash forward, right? It's what is it? It's just a cut over. Right. Now we know that there's a surrealist painter, a hard science fiction writer, Shea, and architect Norm- Norman Leith are all missing, and um, they've been gone for a while. No one knows where they are. The shape of things to come, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And four such prominent people simply dematerialize in the space of half as many months, leaving such bright and promising, you know, careers. I mean, what's up? It seems like something might be. Uh, I, I, I love missing. I love the mystery in this. This. Uh, <sighs> Wow, this is just fantastic storytelling in a um, comic book and um, the appreciation. This, guys, this is one of the, um, I, I guess, a Time magazine or one of the best, one of the, um, um, listen, it's one of the best. It's like the National Enquirer, right? Right. <clears throat> this is kind of what this is. It's like the National Enquirer and it's sort of like not, a, it's, this doesn't seem like a publication that many people take very seriously. And and this is sort of conspiracy nut jobbiness, and in this we find that these people are missing, and we also find scientists are missing, including Dr. Whitaker Furness, mm. who's a brilliant eugenics specialist, and even more still, the parts, uh, the parents and relatives of the psychic Robert Deshane, go to his funeral and find you know he had a stroke and somebody stole his head, so somebody stole the psychic's brain uh-huh. basically. Hmm. So we got. Psychics, brains being stolen, architects, hard science fiction, and geneticists, these people are all just vanishing. Hmm. Yeah. And that's something that is interesting to these conspiracy nuts. Right. And, you know, what is all this being used for? And um, great way. And we, know it's, we know it's basically for a movie, right? So what we know, because we've seen it, is that they're designing a monster of some epic proportions for a movie at an island with total secrecy. Right. right? So we, we, we know that because we've seen it. Right. So nobody in, nobody here has, but we have that information. Yep, and it, it builds upon a mystery. It's just all types of things just happening here, you know. Um, yes. You know, the breakout, you know, Hollis Mason dying, you know. Um, it shows, just shows you how to, the universe is interconnected. The um, mm-hmm. Black Freighter, you know, issue is just now, you know, ending and everything. Um, you know, we got this in um, quote here, what, oh, Halloween. Oh, on Halloween, the old ghosts come about a, about us and speak they come to others they are dumb mm-hmm. hmm. by eleanor farjan you know um yeah they they leave us with these little quotes at the end just to comment on like you know the um the the story so yep um you know we the, the, it was titled old ghost and it's just things just happening in the past that are coming back to into fruition now you know for and this remember chapter the past the story. gets Remember, the past gets brighter all the time, according to Sally. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so the, t- the present gets grimier and grimier, right? But this nostalgia about the golden age it gets better and better and better. Because you don't think about, you know, as time goes on, and this is a weird thing about uh, you, you, memory. Memory doesn't hold pain, right? Your memory doesn't hold on to the actual pain. It only holds on to the good stuff. On, right, exactly. Right, right. And you mentioned nostalgia. What's the um, underlying, like, <laughs> the, the, the advertisements that we keep seeing throughout the story? Nostalgia, nostalgia. Yeah. yeah. You know, we the see. The scent. It's a fragrance. Yeah, we see it. The scent and the, the fragrance in the beginning. We see it as a billboard ad towards the middle of the story, you know. Um, there, was, um, there was a story in, during mo- in modernism, right at the turn of the century, and I can't remember who wrote it, and I'm, I can't remember the title. I'm sure I'll get some hate Scott on this. <laughs> uh, but basically, the idea is this 
<clears throat> this author took a bite of a tea cookie and the taste took him back and he, they sort of described all the memories associated with that cookie. Like it took him, it was like a sensory thing. Mm-hmm. And the smells can do the same thing, I think, for people. For me, I, I, that happens all the time. Every Christmas, I feel like I smell like I, like I smell cookies cooking. And it makes me think about, you know, when I was a kid. Right. So a, a nostalgia fragrance makes a lot of sense in that context. And that's what, that's what these people are chasing, right? Those feelings that they had when they were young that yeah. were, they were vital and they were doing these things that felt good and they were helping people. Right. And now they're, you know, on the main, you know, society is shunning them. It doesn't need them. It doesn't want them. Right. And, and right. You know, it's dangerous to these things. And yes, they've been rejected wholly. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, now they're now they're being hunted by some unknown force, it seems. Yeah. Some unknown force um, may not be a person, may not be. A, it may be a person, it may be a thing, you know, something something's happening. You know, and yeah. these events that are, you know, just escalating are not by coincidence. You know, um, it may seem like it's a master design and everything. But, and, you know, um, of course, when we talk about further chapters, uh, we'll see how all these pieces are being put together. You know, the disappearance of mm-hmm. uh, Max Shea, the um, the the taking of the brain, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. That's the, all <laughs> bizarre and disparate. You know, and, how, how Alice Mason dying, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, it's just escalation. Escalation. All these. All these things, and, and and the thing about that, I hope you know our, our listeners have gathered, you know, if they have aren't familiar with this, uh, is that all these things are you know here for a reason, and the reason that we've been pointing out how tight how tight the writing is and how economical everything is is that you know nothing is wasted, so you know not, nothing that you see in, in here is meaningless, and that's 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 probably the takeaway from some of these bizarre asides, right, right, right. right. So that is the um, chapter, Old Ghost. <laughs> Hooray! I was really bummed out about this chapter. I forgot. I forgot about how like yeah. sad the end of this chapter yeah. is. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, it's really sad because we've um, come to like Hollis Mason. We 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 see how cheery he is. We root for the good guy. We root for the yeah. um, you know, the the hero. You know, he was a hero that, like you said, uh, had the purest of heart. You know, he wanted to do mm-hmm. good things and you know just help people. You know, for and like we said, for him to go out the way he did at the end of this chapter and everything is mm-hmm. a sad thing. And it really shows good, great storytelling when you can um, um, shape a character's arc and shape a character's motivations um, and just tell a certain story about a character and make us feel the way that we do um, yep. when that happens to him at the end. The whole and this is a really funny chapter too. I mean the whole the whole bit with with Big Figure yes. and the whole the fact that they built that up and built that up and built that up and never showed you Big Figure, you know. And then they they made it like exactly how how Batman would call that guy. They call that guy Big Figure, I, I, right? Not Big Figure. I, I love the 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 um con, the the um the the analogy that you pointed pointed out about okay he's the sixty six um you know Joker Penguin Batman you know villain and everything meeting the um yeah. Dark Knight <laughs> yeah <laughs> the right? Dark Knight you know what 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 if those two type of um uh, characters met and clashed you know this is yeah. what it would essentially end up being you got the trope versus the reality I guarantee you I guarantee you in this universe. When Rorschach and Night Owl were going after this guy in 1965, <laughs> at some point, <clears throat> at some point, Big Figure said, "Get him, boys!" Like that, exactly like that. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and and don't forget how we got the detectives. <laughs> you know, just yeah, right? you know, in his um 80s, uh, 70s, and 80s. <laughs> you know, the detectives oh, speaking sugar of- cubes. Oh. <laughs> Look at these sugar cubes here. Hey, you know who else had sugar cubes? Crazy as shit. Rorschach got him. Hey, have a nice day, Mr. Birdman. <laughs> Mr. Oh, like, that's a nice lumber room you got there. Hey, what do you need lumber for? What you building? You just got a woodworking shop? I don't worry about it anyway. I love it. I love it. Great chapter. Great chapter. Great chapter. Yeah, right? You know, excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, these things just, uh, all the chapters are great, but, you know, it's just, it's just great. It's just great reading something that just keeps escalating. It just keeps building in our anticipation. Mm-hmm. Even though me and Scott read this already, you know, yeah. many times over. Um, talking about it and just see, seeing the nuances and the um, different things, you know, that appear in front of you, you know, regarding mm-hmm. like the tight writing, the tight, um, you know, the artistic, the colors and everything. It just goes to show you what a great graphic novel this is. It's really an example of the of the 
the art form being used like it, it's advanced almost like how like James Joyce advanced novels you know yes yes how, how yes. like the structural you know like structural changes or postmodernism shows up around this time too in other literary genres and it's this is almost like the like one of the first postmodern like comic book tales because we have the times jumbled together you get the historicity of a different of a different past and future um, the consequential is it's excellent, excellent it's stuff. super excellent i challenge you guys that are listening you know who, who mm-hmm. have read to bring up bring i, I want to read another graphic novel that is like not so much like this but has the nuances the um the time being taken the um typewriting the i i challenge someone to to present something out there that compares to the watchmen Yes, absolutely. I want to see those because I, I mean, I'd honestly like to read them quite frankly. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, let's, this let's, just let's leaves you this, hungry make, for more. Let's be clear about this. <laughs> this is not some sort of challenge where we're going to, like, defend Watchmen against what no, you're saying. No, we no. just like comic Mm-mm. books. Mm-mm. Yeah, we just want <laughs> hey, to, hey, we're, we're, we th- this is something that, that leaves you hungry for more. And, you know, because, frankly, this is going to end. So, you yeah, know, we as yeah. readers of comic books, we want to see we want to see more of this stuff. You know, Absolutely. we appreciate the complexity and like the um, mm-hmm. the 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 serious the seriousness of, you know, the medium being taken here, you know. Yes. Um, so, yeah, we, I, I put that challenge out there for those listeners that are, um, you know, um, into the to to really appreciate this things. You have to be a comic book fan first. You can't come into this, you know, just reading books and then, you know, reading the story. You don't really appreciate the nuances unless you're an actual comic book reader. You know, that's true. So, um, yeah, I put that challenge out there. And, you know, if if you um, if you find something, you know where to you know catch us at watching Watchmen at Nerdcyclopedia dot com. Comment on our, um, you know, um, Facebook um, groups that Sam is um, Scott are watching Watchmen. Um, you can, you know, e- uh, 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 tweet us. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, us. Uh, tweet, tweet at us, you know, <laughs> <laughs> at Watchmen Podcast One, not with the T, just with a one. Um, they only gave us the one up and down. <laughs> we couldn't afford the side to side slash. And if you didn't or did like those um, um, things that we say, you can always hashtag Sam, uh, hate Sam or hate Scott, you know, f- um, for uh, uh, give us a business, you know, as Scott would say. Yeah. <laughs> And if, and as always, any reviews are appreciated. You know, they're very helpful. They help us become findable on searches. Yes. You know, we get the five star ratings, and we'll show up more. We'll get more listeners, and the more listeners, the more fun. As everybody knows, you know, uh, let's not lose sight of this too. This is all in lead up to make sure that we're all on the same page when those show- Watchmen HBO shows starts. Yep, yep. So I know we started out with this detour into the comics, and I'm so glad we did because it's been so excellent rereading this and talking with you sam about this and and, you know hearing from our listeners um but remember coming soon is this hbo show watchmen Mm -hmm. we're going to be all over that for you we're going to be your one-stop shop for coverage for that so keep your eyes peeled um you know we we decided to do this because we wanted some people to have some content to listen to um we're still waiting on the release date as of recording yeah as we would love to give you more info about our schedule but unfortunately hbo has been dragging their feet they're the hold up not us (laughs) yeah and we'll be going through um as scott said you know different um things watchman related like uh if, if we didn't already say before if you're just catching on listening and everything we'll still be talking about the movie comparing it mm-hmm. to the book you know i can't wait for that um and we're gonna do the director's cut too right oh yeah yeah so we're, we're gonna be we're gonna, do... we're gonna do the ultimate cut so we're not yeah. gonna do the uh, regular movie version we're gonna go yeah. straight to like the ultimate cut that was meant to be seen i guess in the movies but you know because mm-hmm. it was so long it couldn't be, be it could I mean, not be presented that way like really, what are you gonna do? To be honest, the fact that they decided to adopt this as a movie instead of as a, like a mini you know, twelve issue right. miniseries is, is crazy. The fact that they got what they got in in two hours is actually an accomplishment. Yeah, exactly. Right. And there's a lot of really good stuff in the movie, so you know I don't want you to think we're not gonna go all negative on it. You know, even even the basic. Level. Yeah, we're, I was we're, thinking about. I was thinking about these big figure scenes in that movie and how good they were. <laughs> like, they were really excellent, you know. I thought the acting was great. The way they the way they translated to the screen was excellent. Yeah. They added a few grotesqueries that I thought were really cool too. Right. So they actually I, I feel like that's one thing they actually did really, really well. Yeah. So I want to give a little credit on this episode to that. Yep, yep, yep. So um yeah, we're not done yet, guys. We got four more issues no. to go. There's more. <laughs> There's so <laughs> there much is more. more. So, you know, and I can't wait to talk about them. I'm excited too. All right, so um, yeah, so you we got the um the the house clean stuff out the way. We can't wait to um, talk to you guys again next 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 issue next chapter. Yeah, we'll see it. We'll see you soon. We'll be talking issue nine. Issue nine is uh is uh you know a pretty good one. It's called the Darkness of Mere Being, and we're looking forward to seeing you then. All right, see you when we see you guys. Yep, see you later. Oh man.
I'm telling you, that big finger stuff, dude. I can't, I can't stop thinking about how funny that is. He's like, I'm gonna get you in that little cage. You're gonna get it, Rorschach. Then I, I'm gonna cook you like a turkey. Tall order. With that big, that jam. Oh, tall order. Oh, you, oh, I'm gonna, we'll, we'll be back later. We'll see how you talk when there's no guard here to help you.